What's up fam, it's your big bro Joey. Welcome back to the channel. Much love and light to everybody out there. Hope you guys are having a blessed and wonderful day. Thank y'all for joining me again for another pick card reading. Okay, today's reading is gonna be, what do your boss and coworkers think of you? Like, how do they see you? What do they think when they see you? Okay, how do they feel about you? All oh, we're gonna delve into that today on uh, today's reading. We're gonna have three different groups. Uh, the first group is gonna be represented by the Cosmo Tarot. The second group is gonna be by the Heavenly Bloom Tarot deck. And the third group is gonna be by Brit's Third Eye Tarot. You guys could pause the video here and see which one of these decks resonates or speaks and calls out to you and select your pile that way. Or you can, all, you can watch more than one. Or you can watch the whole video and see which one resonates. You know, use your intuition to see what resonates with you the most. Um, as always, take what applies and let the rest fly. We're gonna move on into group number one with the Cosmo Tarot. All right, if you guys have selected the Cosmo Tarot with group number one, we're gonna be seeing what your boss and your coworkers think of you. Okay, how they feel about you, all that lovely stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and clear the energy out here before we get started. Okay, I have us some pre-selected cards, but let's go ahead and see what the, this tarot is talking about. Let's see what we have in the tarot here. Move that out of the way. Okay. What does group number one's boss and coworkers, what do they think of them? their boss and the co-worker. Let's see what we got. First card we have is death. What else? <clears throat> how does group number one's boss and co-workers, how do they, what do they think of them? How do they see them? We have eight of wands. Wow, I'm getting something already. We're gonna wait until I pull another card. Give me one more for group number one, please. There we go. All right, so, ooh, oh, group number one. Yo, we got death. We have eight of wands. And we have page of cups, yo. So right now I see that your your boss and your coworkers may be thinking that you've gone through some sort of transformation. Uh, some of them are thinking that you might be leaving or you might be getting ready to leave or think that you might, <clears throat> that your evolution and that you uh, leaving is inevitable. You know, if you're not leaving now, they're looking at you as somebody who, eventually will leave because they're looking at looking at you like you're somebody who can do better you know what i'm saying they look at you as somebody who whatever position that you're working in right now they're looking at you like yeah they could do better uh they're just this is just a stepping stone for them or that you're eventually going to leave that's what the that's the whole vibe that this is giving me with the death to the eight of wands to the page of cups some of them may be thinking that you're already already out looking for jobs even if you're not they're looking at you like somebody who maybe <clears throat> I'm getting, you don't put your eggs in one basket. Okay. I don't know if some may have transpired, but they're looking at you as moving forward with your life. Like you are on a, if it's, um, if you're moving forward in a, in, in a way of that, you're just moving on, you have, you know, you want to do something else, or if something took place and you don't like the environment, they're looking at you moving forward or they're looking at you as uh, that you're just someone who's like, I'm getting the phrase upwardly mobile. Like that's a confirmation right there. Y'all heard that right there. Y'all heard it. It's confirmation. They're looking at you as somebody who's upwardly mobile and that you're somebody who like, this ain't it for you. Like they see bigger things for you. They see a better position for you. They, they see a better work environment or more success, or they, they feel like, yeah, this person has a lot of gifts. This person has a lot of talents. This person has something about them to where I know that they're just passing through. All right. 
I'm getting for some of you guys, they may be thinking that you are entertaining new prospects right now. Okay, with especially with the page of cups energy here. Uh from the death. Because look, look at it, y'all. We, we're coming from the death, okay, which talks about endings and transformations. You know what I'm saying? And we're we're talking about the eight of wands, which talks about forward movement, which even somebody could be thinking that you you're open to relocating or that you will be relocating somewhere for better job opportunities. And then we have that brand new start with the page of cups, like you doing something with your talents, with your gifts, with your abilities, uh, that may be a better fit for you. Or they're looking at you as like, you could do better, you know? Even if they don't tell you that, even if they're not showing you that, they're thinking, yo, this person could do better. They can do way better than being here, right? You might like the place. You might not want to go anywhere else, but they're looking like, nah, 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 this person could do much, much better than, uh, like I said before, like what uh, they're doing here or they have it in the back of their mind. It could be through the through the grapevine. Maybe somebody said something, OK, or alerted them or they pick it up on some clues that you're looking. I don't know what happened. Either way, they're, they some some people may be looking at yeah, looking at you like, oh, this person is leaving. Oh, they're looking for something else. Oh, they're getting ready to leave. Oh, they're about to get a job interview. People about to start calling them all the whole nine. Right. I'm getting like. With the eight of wands, like you getting uh, people calling you, say, come on an interview. You know, you having something brand new starting for yourself, okay? And we also have mature woman. All right. We have materialistic. Wow. Okay. Okay. I see it. I see it now. And then we have eccentric. I feel like your co workers, including your boss, sees you as somebody who's. A bit different than everybody else like you are not the, the the type of person who i don't know what job or what position that you work they could be seeing you as somebody who was like yo um this person really doesn't fit in this role at this moment like the role that you're doing they're saying that you you should be doing something else that's more suitable for you okay I feel like they may not come out and tell you because they really, some of them may value you. You know what I'm saying? They think that you're a, a, a good, um, you're very, very mature with this mature woman vibes. Even if you're, it doesn't matter if you're male or female, but they're looking at you as somebody who's very, very mature. Like you have a good intuition. Okay. You're very, very, uh, they can see you as somebody who's nurturing or a team player, right? But there's something about you that, you are not a follower, right? You're a leader. They're looking at you like you're a leader. You march to the beat of your own drum. And uh, even if you do fit in with the work environment, uh, you do what you got to do. That's what I'm getting. It's like, it's like some people may be looking at you as somebody who does what they have to do. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're in a specific role, you're going to do that role to the best of your abilities, right? But it might not be the right fit for someone like you is what I'm getting. Someone like you, someone like you, like eccentric. You're 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 not the average person. You're not one of the you know. Uh, well, I'm just gonna say it. That's what came to mind. You're not one of the sheep. You're not one of you're not one of the the crowd, right? You stand out from the crowd. Um, and I'm just hearing that there's there has to be something better for you that's more suited for you, or something that where you can excel. Okay. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not saying they're trying to push you out, but they're saying like, yo, this person can do so much more. It's like, they got so much substance to them. They're like an innovator even, right? Somebody who's maybe too good for the job or the company that you work for. Yeah, they're looking at you guys. You guys may stand out. They're looking at you as you, you're something different. You're somebody different, right? Than everybody else. You stand out. And what this materialistic... They may, some people may be looking at you as like you, you like the finer things in life or you have to go after the money, you know, or I'm um, hearing the highest bidder. <laughs> I don't know what, what, why I'm getting that, but I'm hearing the highest bidder. Like they feel like this person, if a, if a better job comes along, that's going to pay you more than you're going to take it. Right. It could be partially because of your talents, your gifts and abilities and what you have to offer. Or uh, your drive, you know, could be a combination of your work ethic, all that stuff. But they're looking at it as like, yo, this person is not going to, this person might not be making enough money here. I know they're going to find something else. You know, they could do, they can make way more money than we're paying them right now. So in the back of their mind, it's like they, they feel like you, 
you care about that aspect. Like you want to make the most money. You might, you might, they may look at you as having a lifestyle that, that requires, or, um, it correlates to somebody who's making more money, you know, to fit your specific lifestyle or how they think that you should be living or how they, they view that they think that you live, whether it's true or not, they're looking at, Oh, if you're coming to work with designers, you know what I'm saying? Wearing designer clothes, uh, driving a nice car. That is why they're thinking that way. They're like, yo, this person is like, you know, of a different level than everybody that's around here. Um, and they definitely could, they definitely are going to go for more. They want more. Okay. Uh, we also have selfish and we have heartbreaker. Wow. They feel like people feel like you're going to disappoint them, right? Like that you're going to go after what pays you more money. They're looking at you as somebody who just thinks about yourself. Like you, uh, you really, what is the word? What is the phrase I'm trying to find for you guys? It's like, they're looking at you as a type of person who, that you're gonna, you're not going to let uh, a work relationship or, you know, any sense of loyalty stop you from getting to the bag. You're not going to, like, if it's an opportunity that could pay you more and one that's uh, more suits your lifestyle, that you know, you're going to go for it, right? Um, these are some people who, may think that, well, I hired this person, I took a chance on this person, they should show me a sense, a sense of loyalty, but they are feeling that some, I'm, I'm getting that, that you might not have a sense of loyalty to them. You, you, you worrying about yourself. You got your own, you know, with the materialistic, you got your own bills, you got your own life to live, right? You're not going to, you're not going to let a work relationship stop you from moving forward is what, how people are seeing you. On one hand, they feel like you do good work, like you're a good worker. But on the other hand, they feel like you may be a bit more ambitious than the other people that may be around you in some sort of way. And it makes people feel like, oh, this person is not going to be here for long, especially with that heartbreaker energy. They feel like, oh, they're going to leave. Once they find something like they might have just started working here just because they needed, you know, needed something for the moment. Once they find what they're looking for, they're going to be bouncing. And y'all might be thinking, no, I like it here. I'm, I'm not no, I'm not trying to find nothing else. Or maybe you are thinking, hey, I need to get to the bag. Um, I could be making more money. Um, I'm just working here because um, uh, that's what I got to do for the time being. And once I find out what when once I find what I really want, then I'll be out the door. You know what I'm saying? It could be it could be that it could be the other thing. You know what I'm saying? But they feel like that you will eventually break their hearts because I feel like some people have grown attached to you at the job. They've grown accustomed, whether you work in a small uh, environment or a large one. I feel like people have gotten used to you being a part of the team and being there. And I feel like once you leave, it will break some people's heart. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like in the back of their mind, they're like, yo, this person can achieve a lot more or you, you're ambitious and you want to achieve a, achieve a lot more. And you may be... Um, I, I was just hearing on the way out the door. I just heard on the way out the door or, you know, going for yours. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's what I got for you guys for group number one. If you like it, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. And if this resonated for you, please comment in the comment section down below. Let me know how you feel about it. Thank you guys for watching this group. We'll move on to group number two. All right. If you have selected group number two, this is going to be your reading. We're going to see how your boss and your coworkers what they think about you, how they view you, the whole nine. Okay, let's go ahead and clear this energy out here from group number two. All right, let's see what we got with the tarot. We're using the Heavenly Bloom tarot deck today for you guys. And we'll see what, what does your coworkers and your boss, what do they think of you right now? This very moment. I just heard this magic moment. Yeah, this magic moment. The people may be thinking that there's something magical about you and mysterious about you. Yo, yeah, I just heard this magic moment. People think that there's something otherworldly about you is what I'm getting. Uh, there's something unique and special about you as well because you're not like 
I'm getting that you're not like you're not like everybody else. You feel me? You're not like everybody else. You are one of a kind, and you kind of like stand out from the crowd kind of a little bit. You feel me? On the bottom of the deck, we got five of cups. People may be feeling like some people may think that you've had some sort of heartbreak. Okay, either with somebody on the job or just in life in general, and you might be a little somber is what I'm getting. They may be looking at you as somebody who is a bit serious and somber with this five of cups energy that you may have had some tough issues, some tough lessons or tough uh, times in life or on jobs or whatever the hell it is. Um, but they're feeling that there's some sort of, I don't want to say full on dark element, but there's some sort of, uh, uh, what's that word? What's that phrase I'm looking for? There's, um, there's some sort of like deep and heavy energy around you, right? Like you might have not had it too easily in life or on jobs or just in life in general. And you might be a little, I'm getting with this five of cups, you might be a little guarded even, okay? You might be a little disconnected as well. You might come off as somebody who uh, does not play games with people. And I see that with the Queen of Swords here. Okay. You might be somebody who's very, very serious, right? They may view you as somebody who's either, either gone through a divorce or you've gone through some sort of breakup in the past. And it may, be, may, have, may have toughened you up a little bit or made you, uh, uh, what is that? Like, not let people play with you. You feel me? That type of vibe. And they may view you as somebody who doesn't let people play games with them. And you really set healthy and strong boundaries for yourself. And I feel like some people feel at your job, some people are feeling that you, you, you're a little distant from everybody. Like you, you keep this uh, level, uh, amount of distance in between you and other people. Like you might not readily let people in or you might not readily let them get close to you. Or you might even for some of you guys. They miss you as somebody who's a little uh, a little distant and reserved as maybe they're looking at you as that you're maybe protecting yourself and you don't get involved in the office politics and all that that crap. You feel me? You're just like to yourself or you're uh, there's a there may be a, a, a serious or a cold side that you might show to people. But that might give off this vibe that you don't play games, especially with this Queen of Swords energy that like you're not you're not here to play games. Some of you guys may give out the vibe that yeah, I'm here to do my job and that's it. And I'm going home. Don't come in my face talking about my personal business. Don't be all don't don't try to holler at me like that on the job. Let's keep it professional and let's just do it like just like that. Right. And I feel like you guys may have some people who are interested in you on the job. People may find you attractive. People may find you alluring, appealing, something about you is uh magnetic right even even if you are a little distant even if you do keep up a little walls stay to yourself it, it, it still makes people want to get to know you but at the same time they're kind of scared like they don't know if you're going to like chop their head off you know with that sword with the queen of swords they don't know if you are going to snap on them or what they don't know how you're going to react so i feel like people might uh Mm, I'm hearing that some people might walk on eggshells around you, or some people are just extremely careful around you. They don't want to say the wrong thing. They don't want to do the, the wrong thing. You may have people who are who come around you, and you can sense that they want to talk to you, but they don't because they're scared. Or let's say somebody comes into your office and they're asking you, "Oh, can you, can I borrow a pen? Uh, do you have a post-it? You know, something like that." And then they use it, and then they go, "Oh, thank you." But it's just that they wanted to be around you. They wanted to come in there. They might have had something to say, but then they chickened out or they just wanted to be just around you or they do little, you know, a uh, little, I want to say sneaky, but they do little things like that, little low key things like that, that have like, they just, because they can't, I feel like people feel like they can't be up front to you uh, out of fear of rejection, you know, with this queen of swords energy here as well. But they, but at the same time, with the three of, uh, three of cups, I, I see that they find you very, um, uh, they find you very friendly, okay? They find you very friendly, they find you very, there's a side of you, even though 
you're the, you may be the type or come off as a type that is like, I don't want to play. I don't play games. Don't play with me. Don't come to me with this workplace drama. I'm not with it. You know, because maybe you've experienced things like this on your job on, in the past. You know how messy a uh, messy a work environment can be. Okay. And you just say, yo, uh, keep it cute. Keep it cool. There may be people that want to holler at you at work and you may, you just, and you just keep it like friendly. Keep it cordial. All right. And we have the two of wands here. And this talks about expansion and possible planning. They, some people could be, if you're doing something like on the side or if you bring work to your job or, you know, anything like that, they could be, they could see you as somebody who is planning a, a major move or you want something more out of life and or that you're destined just like group number one okay group number one had the same type of energy that you are uh destined excuse me that you are either destined i don't know why that word came out for you guys but that you're destined or you guys are are, are headed for something else like you could be doing something else i don't know what type of position you guys work but uh i'm getting that they're viewing you as somebody that you could do way more or that you are possibly working on wanting or wanting more or doing more for yourself. Like I said, if you have a side hustle, people are talking about that, but they're talking about like, yeah, that person is, you know, they may be going places or uh, there's some sort of expansion with this two of wands energy. Are they see you even if you are not actively trying to do nothing extra or uh, even if you're not at, uh, actively trying to pursue other positions or work your way up. They see you as either climbing the ladder, okay, at the company or finding something else that, that that's more, uh, uh, that has more growth potential in it. Either way, they, they see you moving. They see you doing way more than you're doing right now. So they see you on a track to uh, greater success in what you're doing right now, okay, in whatever position that you are uh, currently in, okay? Um, and they even could see, they even could, if you, if you guys, they may think that you guys have the potential to either, uh, travel, maybe leave and go somewhere. This is similar, almost, almost similar in, in ways as group number one. Okay. So it's like, they, they may see you guys moving somewhere, moving on up. I just heard moving on up to the East side, George and Wheezy, are you guys moving up or moving away? or even uh, some international movement or travel or business, okay? Especially if you guys do like business or do something online or something like that, they can see you guys expanding in that area. So they, if, you, if you're like a YouTuber or you do like, um, I don't know why I just heard um, import, export, business, something like that. Yeah, something that has, that has something to do with uh, travel or expansion, okay? We have debater. Low key. And home body. Okay. They view as somebody who stays to yourself. Wasn't this, isn't this kind of similar to group number one? They view as somebody who stays to yourself. Like you might not be a partier. You might be somebody who who's low key. You're not out. You're not in everybody's business. You're not. Don't allow everybody into your business. Like I said, there's that. There's that sort of uh, private and protected type of factor that you might have. Like you may engage with people. You may uh, be very, very friendly with people. But at the same time, you have your high. You had your. Uh, you have your what do you call it? Uh, boundaries in place. Okay, and I and I feel like people find that you're very, very fierce. As a word, you're very, very fierce about your boundaries as well. But they view you as as a homebody. Like you, you might like to. You mean if you talk about watching TV or doing something at home, working at home, or having projects or something at home, they see that you're somebody that you're not in the streets, or you give off that vibe. They're seeing you as somebody who doesn't maybe go out to clubs and do that kind of thing, right? You you like your alone time, and you just. You live a low-key type of existence and a low-key type of life. Uh, with the low-key energy also, it's like, it's not secretive, but I feel like they just, people are seeing you as somebody on the job that you stay to yourself. 
You're not in everybody's business. You don't want everybody in your business. You're not worried about what nobody's doing. You're keeping to yourself. You're staying to yourself. And that's what it is. You feel me? Like you're not, you're not um, hungry for attention, you know, from other people. You're not, you're not looking for uh, somebody to give you some kind of approval or some type, some type of appreciation. You don't really care about that kind of stuff. You don't like attention like that. They're, yeah, that's what it is. They look at you as somebody you, do, you don't like attention. You don't like drama. You don't like chaos. You don't like confusion. But at the same time, if somebody brings you the drama, if somebody brings you something, or if somebody puts some blames you for something that you didn't do, that you uh, you'll readily like stand up for yourself with this debater energy, right? They see you as somebody like you stand up for what you believe in. And you're not gonna let allow anybody to come in and tell you any differently. That. Even though you have this side of you that's low key and that's like a homebody that's to yourself reserved, there's still another part of you that you're going to pop off when you need to pop off with this, you know, to, to stand up for yourself. Right. Uh, that still falls in line with you having these uh, strong boundaries and you setting healthy boundaries for yourself. And you're not allowing other people to overstep those boundaries. And um, if there's something that you believe in or someone, um, infringes on your free will in some sort of way that you're going to defend yourself if somebody on the job try to blame something on you you're going to stand up for yourself you're not just going to take you know the blame and just let people bulldoze all over you you're not doing that you're you stand up for yourself and i'm here for some of y'all i heard that you got a mouth on you for some of y'all might have a mouth on y'all you know what i'm saying and uh people know that you know you're going to talk your shit when you if you need to talk your shit you know if, if that that needs to be done you know you're not gonna bite your tongue. You're not going to be afraid. You're not going to sit back and be like a quiet little church mouse. No, you're going to let your uh, opinion be known. And it is what it is. I just heard, I, I said what I said, like you're very, very firm in what you uh, believe in. You're very, very firm in, in what you think and what you believe. You feel me? <clears throat> and I feel like you don't, you're not the type the type of person you you respect everybody else, right? You're not infringing on anybody's free will. You're not infringing on anybody's, uh, boundaries you stay to yourself and i feel like you guys uh being that you respect other people that you uh expect to give that same respect and uh in return especially since it's on the job and i feel like you guys are very very uh professional you're the type of people who actually abide by the rules or follow the rules that kind of thing you know you're not you're not the type of person who's at work acting a fool or acting unprofessional you know when you walk through the doors that you're at your job and you conduct yourself as so we have intimidating here yeah so people just like with this queen of source energy i told you guys about people see you as intimidating there's something about your energy when you walk into the room you demand respect you know i'm hearing that uh nelly Furtado song and what it goes shuva shuvin yao Vain, vain, reka. What is it? What is it? What is it? How does it go? Shuva, shuvinyao, vain, vain, repa. I, I forgot the name of it, but it's like, uh, something about uh, I demand attention when I walk into a room. You know, it's like you demand this sort of attention when you walk into a room. You're not even trying because you're not, you're not looking for attention, but people, it's your aura, okay, that they're noticing. It's your uh, confidence that they're noticing. It's your sense of inner security that they may be noticing. Or it's this level of protection that you have around yourself. Could be for some of y'all walls up that they're noticing. All right. So it's like, even if you're quiet, everybody's going to notice you. Right. So it's like, you can't hide. You know, I heard a song, ready or not, here I come. You can't hide. I don't know why I'm getting all these songs with you guys in this group, but you guys may be people who are into music or you may be into some sort of creative pursuit. They may view as that as well, or they may see you guys as, um, I don't know if you let people in on it, or they found out, or you told them uh, that you have some sort of creative talent and creative ability, all right? They see you guys as very, very, uh, I don't know why I heard, which heard multifaceted in some ways in your life, okay? And then we also have decisive, okay? They view as somebody. They view as somebody who, when you need to make a decision, you're gonna make it right then and there, or you make it really fast. You know, you make up your mind easily. You're not running back and forth. 
You're not somebody who is going to uh, hang on to an assignment forever because you're scared. You don't know what to do. You're going to just execute it and you get the job done. That's what I'm I'm hearing. Your boss uh, specifically is looking at you as somebody who gets the job done and they don't have to worry about whether or not you're going to do your job or not because you don't need that supervision. They're looking at you as somebody who doesn't require supervision and they don't have to micromanage you because you're going to get the job done. You're going to do what you need to be. You're going to do what you need to do. Okay, to execute your job properly. And I feel like they don't have no problem with you, you know, your coworkers or your, um, oh, I just heard you. some of your coworkers maybe a little, you know, um, I don't want to say, yeah, maybe int intimidating, a little, a little intimidated by you, okay? And they don't know how to approach you. I feel like some people want to approach you, but they don't know how to, so they just, you know, maintain their distance. You might see people watching you from afar or passing by your office, peep, peeping in the office, but they're not saying anything or acting like they don't see you, but they're watching you kind of, you know, trying to peep and see what you're doing because they're sort of low-key interested because you're so, uh, there's an air of mystery about you. Hmm. I feel some of your coworkers are thinking well then like this person like even though they're calm cool and collected they're not to be messed with i think we touched bases on that with the queen of swords energy as well but yeah that's what i got for you guys for group number two if you like it like the video subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more and if this resonated for you please comment in the comment section down below and let me know how you feel about it okay we'll go on and move on to group number three all right if you guys have selected brit's third eye tarot Group number three, this is going to be a reading. We're going to see how your boss and your coworkers uh, feel about you, what they think about you, how they view you, okay? All right, let's get some tarot on the case. We're going to be using Bridge Third Eye Tarot, okay? So tell us how does group number three's boss and coworkers... What do they think about them? How do they view them? Let's see what we got here for you guys. How does group number three's coworkers, how do they, what do they think about them? We got Knight of Pentacles. We got, uh, what is it, Four of Wands. more well we got two more we got seven of pentacles and the moon all right i feel like your co-workers or boss i just heard they actually love you you feel me a lot of people feel like that um they may low-key low-key feel that you are just like family to them or like an extended version of their family. Some of them with this uh, four of wands energy could feel like you guys are just like of their soul tribe. You get along, like you guys fit together. You go together like a hand in glove for some of you guys, or you just have this sort of uh, rapport about yourself, um, this energy about yourself that you guys get along very, very well. And it just feels like second nature when you're around each other. And it doesn't matter because you see on this card, four of wands, we have all different shades right here on the card, right? So I feel like even if you guys have differences, right? Even if you have like age differences, um, culture differences, um, ethnicity differences, it really doesn't matter that you guys come together and you work well together as a team. I feel like they, they feel like you really fit with the team. And um, I just feel like they enjoy being around you. They feel they find you being, they find you as being a hard worker. All right. You're very, very, um, persevering and you have a i'm just hearing a bright future ahead of you at the company if not the company wherever you go that you guys are very very hard workers and you don't give up and that you're not somebody who is trying to get a quick oh i just heard a quick buck okay you you're in it for the long run okay i don't know how long you've been working in that place you're working at right now but 
they're looking at you like you're in it for the long run and you willing to put in the work that it takes, especially with the seven of pentacles here. You're willing to put in the work that it takes to get the job done. And um, I just heard you're a great um, team player. The, your, your coworkers feel like they can depend on you. Okay. They don't have to. Um, they don't have to worry when you're around and they know you're going to get the job done. Okay. They, they're looking at you as somebody, they think of, think of you as somebody who's, once you uh, start a project, you always finish it. You know, you're a very, very hard worker. Like I said before, did I say it already? I don't know. But you're a very, very hard worker and that you don't give up. Okay. And then we also have the moon energy here. Let's go ahead and pull another one because it may be a little mystery about you. Something hidden, like you keep a part of yourself hidden. Maybe you mind your own business in some sort of ways, or there's part of your life that you don't share with this moon energy, but let's see what it is. Let's see what this moon energy is talking about. Yeah, your family, 10 of pentacles. We got 10 of pentacles. And then we got eight of cups. Wow, I don't know if uh, if you guys have had any issues with your family or if, if you, uh, I know this is not gonna resonate with everybody, but if you have issues with your family, if you went through a divorce, um, yeah, something is just something going on with maybe your friends and family, somebody that you depended on, some some level of support in some way that you might not talk about them, or some people maybe may think that you've walked away from your family, you don't care about them, and you had some sort of breakup, you had some sort of divorce, something like that that you don't talk about, that you keep secret, or that you keep hidden from them. There's something regarding a family unit, okay, with this Ten of Pentacles. For some of you, it could be the fact that they may think that you want to get away from your family or walk away from your family or that you have or that there's a little distance or something going on in that area or that is because you don't talk about them that much. They feel like there's something, there must be something going on in that area. You know, with this, uh, with the Ten of Pentacles to the Eight of Cups. Hmm. Interesting. So we also have past life. It's funny we got past life in, in Four of Wands because it's definitely giving me Soul Tribe energy here. Like they feel like you guys are of the same Soul Tribe. They feel like you get each other. They feel like they get you. They understand you. That you're just one of them. You're one of them with this past life energy. They feel that there's a sense of familiarity about you. Okay. Some people may felt may have felt like when you first met or when you first started working there, that uh, that there was something about you that they knew automatically that you were going to fit in automatically that they were going to get along with you. You know, that you, you were not going to be like a, somebody who, you know, uh, clash with the with the crew per se. Okay. Uh, we got young man. Uh, so with this energy here, it doesn't matter if you're male or female. It just shows that people are seeing you as somebody who has this youthful vibrancy about yourself. Okay. At times, they feel like you can be a little reactive. Okay. They may see you as somebody who's a little reactive, like maybe that you have a lot more to learn. I don't know if you just started on the job or that's just a the... What they're picking up from you is that there's a side of yourself that may be, I don't want to say volatile, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's more, uh, borderlining more so on reactive that, uh, you might have this side of yourself to where you could go off or. express less control when it comes to your emotions that's what i'm getting also or you could be kind of headstrong is what i'm getting too there's something about you okay uh for some of you guys this might apply for everybody but there's something about you that they're seeing as kind of headstrong you know that you're willing to take chances regardless if if, if, if a mistake is made you may be willing to learn from those mistakes that you're very, very eager to is what I'm picking up. Also, that you're very, very eager to learn, eager to uh, develop your career and move forward as well. 
okay? Let's see what else we got. We got social light. They see you as somebody who's very, very, um, I'm getting extroverted, okay? Somebody who's very extroverted and you can be somewhat of the life of the party. I just heard class clown for somebody. I know that's not going to apply to every single person, but you're somebody who's very, very social, okay? Um, you get to know everybody on the job. Everybody knows you. You have a lot of vibrancy, a lot of energy about you as, also as well. Um, dude, don't discriminate is what I'm getting. Like you talk to everybody. People may see or people may find that you are open to talking to everybody. You're open to getting to know everybody. And you're cordial with everybody, right? You're, you're not the type of person who's going to just like be like, oh, I'm not going to talk to that person. I'm not going to talk to them. Da, da, da. No, you are going to get to know everybody, right? You're going to. I feel like people feel like feel this vibrant, youthful energy from you, okay? That can uh, lift people's spirits, that can lift their moods, okay? You get people to, I don't want to say live on the edge, but you get people to to liven up. You know what I'm saying? Get to get you get you get people to loosen up, and I'm I'm getting somebody too that like people might go to. It's not going to be for every single person, but somebody goes to for uh, laughter, you know, for a, a, a nice laugh or just to take it for a different perspective, you know, or for I'm hearing a, a fresh perspective, right? One that is not like so much tainted by the world and by the real world more one that's more so um, that you bring life back into the work environment, you uh, make people believe in their dreams again. You make them want to go out and have fun. You might make them want to go out and say, oh, let's go and have drinks, you know, together. Or, let's go hang out here together. Let's go out to lunch together. Like people, I feel like people love being around you because they feel like you make them feel at home and you feel like family and they get an up uplifting type of vibe and type of feeling from you. Yeah, let's see what, what else we got right here. We got logical. They view as somebody with a good, you got a good head on your shoulder. All right. You got clear and sound reasoning. They could talk to you. Okay. They could depend on you to act accordingly in a professional environment as well. And they could depend on you to do the right thing. Like you're not going to be the person who's stealing work time or stealing uh, work items or stealing money or any weird stuff like that. No, they feel like that you have a good head on your shoulders. All right. Whether it's you have street smarts, common sense, or I don't know, uh, whatever it is, they feel like you, you, you're somebody who also, for some of you guys, they feel like they can come to you for advice and you'll give them logical, you could give them sound advice. You'll tell them the right thing, right? You'll put them back on track. Like you're very, very, they're looking at you as that you're very, very grounded in that type of way to where, yeah, I can go to this person. I can ask them, you know, uh, what should I do with this issue? What should I do with that? And then you will give them, you know, uh, and um, you will give them a reasonable response, right? You, you know, one the one one that's well thought out and one that actually makes sense, one that is not based off of emotions per se, right? Or doing the wrong thing per se. You're going, you're going to have, you're going to get them right. You're not going to stir them down the wrong path, is what I'm getting. And then we have damaged. It says, I've had my heart broken a time or two. They may feel like that you guys, there's some sort of element that people are seeing in you, whether it's the truth or not, you know, whether they don't know what the hell they're talking about or not. There's some uh, element about you that people feel like it's kind of like you've had a tough time, whether with your family, whether with the love connection, uh, whether it was a divorce or whether you just parted ways with your family, whatever it was. They're looking at it as like, you might have had some tough times. You might have had a damaged heart. But I feel like at the same time, uh, they're thinking that there's something about you that has to do with that type of heartbreak or something like that that you are not sharing with them. Now, it could just be your uh, disposition or the way that you act, the way you are normally, right? But they're thinking, they're looking at you as like, there must be something that took place. There must be something that happened to this person. Like I said, whether it's, they might be right, they may be wrong, but they're looking at you as like, there's an element to you that is comes off as if you had your heart broken, you've had you've been disappointed by someone that you trusted, that you love, something along those lines for you, 
Okay. At the same time, I'm 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 getting regardless of your age, it's it's like uh, I'm getting wise for your age, uh, wise beyond your years. That type of vibe that I'm getting for you guys as well. Like I said, it doesn't matter your age. It could have been somebody from the past might have seen you that way. I don't know, but it's like they're looking at you as like you've been through a lot. So now that you you know a lot, you feel me? And you might know a lot. You might know more than people that is older than you on the job. And they may even be the ones that's coming to you for advice because you've been through some things or you've seen some things, right? You've experienced some things. And they're like, yo, I could get some, I could learn something from this person. You know, even if they're younger than me or even if they're older than me, it doesn't really matter. Even if we're the, we're the same age, it really doesn't matter, okay? But yo, that's what I got for you guys for this group. If you like it, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. And if this resonated for you, please comment in the comment section down below. And thank you so much for joining me today for another reading. Hope you guys had an awesome time. Much love and let you guys. Obrigado. Ciao.